Hi there, welcome to Dino's World. Guess what? I have the shotgun 650 with me. Better late than ever. I guess I am the last person to review this. But anyway, thanks to Royal Enfield for uh, you know allowing me to spend adequate time with this machine. Now, what is the shotgun 650? What is it all about? Inspired by custom for custom is the tagline. So it's all about custom theme, custom elements. The love for custom motorcycles and uh, you know setting yourself free setting your soul free and uh, you know building something that you uh, visualize so do we have that custom theme you know uh, emerging or emanating out of the shotgun 650 well that is kind of a question mark because when we saw the bobber concept first being unveiled boy it looked absolutely out of the world and uh, Slowly but surely, when it started taking production form, I think some way down the line, they've lost that custom essence because custom means freedom. Custom means out of the box. Custom means having your own soul and personality. But this one feels like a make-do compromise kind of machine. Do you feel it's a bobber? Well, what is the definition of a bobber? Means like in the 60s, and the 70s people used to get rid of the unwanted panels they used to put fat tire tires they used to bob the front and rear fender fenders so bob the fenders means cut the fenders so that is where the bobber concept emerges from so they haven't had any bobbed front fender or bobbed rear fender when you look at the fat bob from harley davidson man it looks like a badass boulevard bruiser but when you look at this one it just looks like just now the classic 350 or a, a, another 650cc motorcycle coming from the house of Royal Enfield. So that is kind of a letdown for me because we know what Royal Enfield guys are capable of. They've given us the Himalayan, uh, an immortal beauty. They've given us the Continental GT650, an absolutely Picasso painting like the uh, kind of a, you know eternal design. Now why couldn't have they come up with something better, something more imposing, something more compelling, something more convincing, uh, making us believe that custom motorcycles, you know, still do exist. Now when you look at Rajputana Customs or uh, Imore Customs, you have that uh, custom theme written all over the motorcycle, be it the headlamp design, be it the suspension, be it the speedo console, be it the tires, be it the way the exhaust is laid out. Everything is unique, everything stands out, but that isn't the case. Now, I know it is not easy for production line to have that kind of uh, uniqueness and that kind of uh, unique persona, but I believe they could have done better. So apart from that, Let's leave that out. Let's give you an overview of the motorcycle in and of itself. When you look at the headlamp, this is the LED headlamp, similar to what we see with the 650cc uh, uh, Super Meteor. So the headlamp premiered with the Super Meteor. It looks good. There's no doubt about it. But again, this, when you are underscoring the fact that it is custom, it breathes custom, it lives and, uh, you know, it is defined by custom, they could have given it its own personality. Again, why would you give these kind of turn blinkers in 2024? I think it demands uh, LED turn blinkers. Also, the uh, mirrors are not up to the mark to, uh, you know, justify the kind of custom theme it lives by uh, i love the levers the adjustable levers are of good quality the handlebar is of good quality it has nice and wide uh, stance to it and also it has that uh, dragster kind of a feel uh, it uh, offers better streetability we're going to talk about it in a moment also usd folks now this is the highlight of the motorcycle big piston folks separate function folks from showa suspension USD folks give superb front end feel and great confidence to push it to its very limits. Apart from that, uh, you have uh, Zoom Cruise tires. I think these are Seat tires. Yeah, maybe this is an 18 inch up front and uh, you have a 17 inch wheel at the back. This is a 100 section tire. The tire at the back is a 150-70 R17. It's a radial tire. Uh, C8 Zoom tires are kind of okay. They do the job at the end of it all but they are not the best. So when you are coming up with a custom motorcycle uh, and also calling it a bobber, 
you could have bobbed the rear fender first of all bobbed the chopped the front fender given it fatter tires i would have preferred a 120 section front tire and a 180 section rear tire you have a power plant you have a capable power plant you have a 648 cc parallel twin that is really really refined to the core is a torque master 52.3 newton meters of max torque and 47 ps of max power why did you shy away from going all the way but anyway now coming back to the uh, profile uh, this thing again this is a 13.8 liter tank yeah we have uh, jet fighters doing rounds here so i keep telling you uh, there is an airfield close by so you have the flying exercises happening early in the morning but it's a beautiful morning here in hyderabad so this looks big but offers lesser tank capacity it's a 13.8 liter tank so you can call it a 14 liter tank uh, but I could have uh, preferred at least a 15 litre tank because almost everyone takes the Royal Enfield out for touring. They want to saddle their bags and they want to go exploring. That's why they buy a Royal Enfield because they want to explore or take the roads less travelled and uh, you know uh, just set themselves free from this fallen world. And uh, you know Royal Enfield motorcycles are like unplugged music. They've never ever you know, uh, did uh, shy away from owning what they truly are. They haven't tried to mimic others. They haven't tried to copy others. Just because uh, electronics are selling, they didn't, uh, you know, give you overdose, overdose of electronics. It's always been pure soul motorcycling and like pure unplugged music. So that soul does continue with each of the motorcycles even to this date. But uh, when you look at uh, the theme that they are trying to define for this motorcycle, that's where it falls short. But anyway, talking about the brakes, you have a 320mm disc up front and a 300mm disc at the back. Goodness gracious. I think this has to be the largest rare disc in uh, uh, the segment and in our motorcycle industry. It uh, comes with dual channel ABS as uh, standard. And uh, the seating stance. So this is another interesting thing because Super Meteor uh, is a beautifully built motorcycle, one of the finest in its class. Now when you look at the handlebar, this is different from the Super Meteor. This almost gives you a bullet kind of a vibe or a classic 50 kind of a vibe. And uh, the foot pegs are slightly forward set. So this again kind of gives you a reasonably comfortable uh, seating posture. But uh, they could have done it better. But okay, it uh, feels comfortable. It doesn't feel too committed uh, like what I felt with the Harley Davidson Sportster. It is a great motorcycle to ride day in and day out, but it is not something that you'll relish for long distance rides, for mile munching and all. So this one will help you uh, with the mile munching. You can travel, you can, uh, uh, you know, tour on this motorcycle. You have a saddle uh, bag, uh, you know, uh, this thing... Uh, rack at the back as a accessory you can always slap it on and go touring but uh, yeah so when compared to the super meteor which is more of a low slung laid back relaxed cruiser kind of stance this one is more street focused allowing you to flick through the flick yourself through the uh, city streets chocolate block city traffic and uh, that's where this one comes as more usable proposition uh, again the seat height is 795 mm the ground clearance is kind of a concern because it uh, says it is 140 mm. So uh, today while tackling speed breakers, we have tackled smaller speed breakers and uneven speed breakers. We didn't bottom out or uh, the bottom didn't scrape. So that is one thing. And yeah, uh, when I'm saying we, uh, I'm thankful to my brother Ravant, who is uh, an aspiring racer, an aspiring director and also an aspiring <laughs> photographer, a bundle of talent. So waiting to be unleashed. So it's just a matter of time before you see him uh, you know, succeed. Uh, thanks to my brother for helping me shoot this video. Again, coming to the rear section, you have uh, blackened exhaust, twin exhaust, a signature element of all the 650 uh, uh, you know, lineup. Then twin shock absorbers at the back. These are from Showa as well. So the shock absorbers are slightly on the stiffer side. That is one thing you need to note. And apart from that, even when you look at the tail section, let me just turn it on. I think LED lamp up front, LED tail lamp as well. So it's kind of even, Steven, give and take kind of a thing. I really miss LED turn blinkers, man. And the seat is nice and comfortable. So when you look at the stance of the handlebar, as I told you, it's kind of a dragster kind of a shape. Again, speedo console, man, you could have done better. When you call it a custom themed motorcycle, you could have given it something unique. 
to stand out to make people's jaw hit the ground so you have the uh, digital console you have the eco kind of a uh, layout here and a gear position indicator fuel gauge uh, odometer and uh, what not and apart from that oh yeah you have trip a trip b the odometer you have the controls right over here and uh, the speedometer uh, we're going to see how much uh, it manages to pull off when it comes to top speed yeah it is e20 compliant bs6 phase 2 so the price again i'll uh, list it out uh, in the uh, on the screen the uh, expected mileage approx uh, is around 22 kmpl uh, is what i could figure out from online sources what do you think about the shotgun 650 does it make you convince that it is a custom themed motorcycle or would you prefer a continental gt or an interceptor 650 instead or would you prefer a super meteor instead so what do you think about this concept in and of itself feel free to comment below and let me know for now let's not waste any more time let's hop on and let's hit the road and let's see how it feels to ride in real world conditions well hello there guys i have the shotgun 650 all to myself uh, a motorcycle that defines custom that stands up for custom and uh, is built with the theme of custom so let's see what she is truly made up of in real world conditions 648 cc pallet twin that puts out 47 ps of max power and 52.3 newton meters of max torque we are talking about custom you gotta let it go no more strings attached Almost close to 160, so that's pretty good. And enjoy the morning breeze. Uh, separate function, folks. Big piston, folks, from Showa, which makes it stand out. A uh, good front end feel. USD, folks. So they really hold on to the front end, give you uh, the reassurance and the confidence to push it to its limits and uh, it's a little more applicable than the super meteor because that has that uh, low slung cruiser kind of a character it's more for the for munching miles on the highways this one uh, can be enjoyed in the on the streets as well so a little bit of street control handlebar and street ability has been offered here the switches uh, i don't know like they could have given it a different kind of a theme instead of giving it the same kind of module uh, because the Baba custom when it first premiered blew our senses away I mean the kind of design silhouette it had on offer was on a different level altogether so this one seems like a compromise it doesn't feel committed to its, commit, uh, to its custom theme custom is freedom custom is you know, setting yourself free. Custom is without limitations. Custom is without compromises. But when you look at the shotgun 650, uh, you feel that uh, they had to compromise on few things. I mean, I love the custom levers. I mean, the levers with adjustable, uh, I mean, levers with adjustment. Yeah. Stopping power almost instantaneously. So that's pretty much it. So I love the way it rides, I love the way it has kind of a different kind of uh, ergonomics uh, making it stand out. Uh, it is a little more usable in the city traffic. You don't feel the weight once you get going. The clutch feels doesn't feel too heavy. The gear shifts are okay, not too clunky. Throttle response is phenomenal. 
the engine is nice and refined as well uh, it uh, does want to set itself free so overall I feel uh, they ha do have something special but they could have done it much much better I mean they could have given it a design that would have blown your mind away I mean the same uh, bobber design that was premiered if you could have built the production concept close to it it would have been better LED turn blinkers should have been offered as standard and uh, maybe a fatter rear tire you get 150 section rear tire which is good enough but uh, almost all the bikes get that so custom bobbers usually get a fat front tire this one gets only a hundred section tire you could have at least offered a 120 section tire up front and uh, 180 at the back to make it look like a you know badass bruiser so anyway these are just my thoughts if you want to go custom go free man don't limit yourself uh, I know what uh, our uh, R&D guys at uh, RE are capable of. I mean, <laughs> they have given us uh, the Himalayan, they have given us the Continental GT, beautiful motorcycles. So when they come up with a custom, the expectations go really high. So that's pretty much it. What do you guys think of the Bobo 650? Feel free to comment below and let me know. Suspension is really good. Uh, it really holds the line. Uh, it gives you very good straight line stability the stopping power is reassuring as well when you drop the anchor at around 160 kilometers per hour so overall a beautiful bike that could have been done better a beautiful concept that could have been pulled off in a better better way uh, but uh, thanks to royal enfield for giving me this opportunity to bring this review to you guys catch you guys in the next video until then take care god bless and ride safe